<laughs> in preparation for an upcoming adventure across the Atlantic from Canada to Greenland to Iceland with Air Journey, an amazing company that offers concierge service for owner operators to fly their turboprops and jets literally around the world. We're gonna show you how to set up the G1000, which also flies the G1000 NXI for North Atlantic. We'll show you three things. We're gonna show you how to set up the lat long on the maps, how to do lat long waypoints, and how to cha change the COM channel spacing. So it's a lot of fun. Done other trips with Air Journey through the Caribbean. And on this particular one, we're gonna show you how to set uh, some of these components up for your G1000, which is also applicable where at other locations you go internationally. So come watch us show you how to configure the G1000. I'm excited about this next Air Journey going to Greenland and Iceland. I'm the journey director leading a group of pilots, this particular one and a group of TBMs and a Citation on this adventure. It's a lot of fun. We have a blast, see great sights, good food, nice conversation with other pilots. And uh, it's really an adventure that you'll never forget. Now let's dive into the G1000 and show you how to set it up for another uh, air journey adventure. We're going to show you three tips for crossing the North Atlantic with the Garmin G1000, how to set it up. First of all, we're going to show you on the map how to set latitude and longitude lines on the uh, map page itself. Pretty simple, but it comes in handy when you need to do reporting. So when you're on the map page, which you'll come in through here, you hit menu, map setup, go to group land, and then you come here to lat long. We're going to make it medium just so we can see it. And then in this uh, range right here, we're just going to put it really high just for now to show you. So bingo in here, it's hard to see because it's really light. But now what we've got here is latitude, longitude lines with the values going across. It comes in handy, especially when ATC is asking you to report certain positions. And we'll show you how to do a specific waypoint in there or just so that you know your navigation going across uh, if you need to, just to, for position reporting, like say you're at one intersection, let's say hoist, and you're gonna be at X, Y, Z waypoint in the future. So this is really nice. Then what you wanna be able to do is enter a waypoint by lat long. So we're gonna show you how to do that. That's pretty simple as well. You come, uh, we call them chapters, come to the waypoint page and through there. So we have waypoint. And then what we wanna be able to do on waypoint is then we want to be able to come in through here and enter a user waypoint. So let's say right now we've got one in here called 6640, which I use the notation for it'll be north 6640 west. But let's build another waypoint just so you can see it. So one that'll be more applicable for our, our uh, here. So let's say that we're going to do uh, north 61. So we're just going to come here and say north 61 and uh, 52, just to give you an example. So I just use that for the notation. Come down through here, we're gonna create it. Waypoint type, you don't want radial distance, that's what it defaults to. What you wanna be able to do is lat long. Got that, come down here and it has it information through here and you say where you wanna be. And let's say we're gonna be 61 north so we just put 61. Then you have to come over to the other part of the uh, degrees and put that at zero. So we have north. Now we're gonna come down here and west and let's say it's 50, 55. Bingo. Now you can hit temper if you want to, but otherwise, Best just leave it there. So now we have 6155. So let's say we have that way that waypoint is now done and you can see it in your list. Then you come to your flight plan. And let's say you want to put that waypoint between hoist and narcissus You come down through here, then you just put in your new waypoint. So you come back here to where your users are. You'll see it in here. Enter it. Bingo. Got it. And that's in your flight plan. 
So now you can see here on our flight plan, right here, you can see that it's inserted that waypoint 6155. So it's a really easy way to do it. So that's how you do inner latter, uh, latitude, longitude waypoints. And I'll show you another thing for when you travel in Europe, you have to do spacing, different spacing on the comm frequencies to 8.33. So let's show you how to do that. So to do that, all we have to do is we come over to our aux page, aux uh, chapter in through here, and we go to the comm setup. And so we're going to go over here to the comm setup in he through here. And you'll see it, aux system setup, channel spacing 25. So activate the cursor, come over to here. And you just simply pick 8.33 kilohertz. Bingo, you're set. So now you're set to communicate. Now you'll notice that your frequencies have a higher granularity up here on your comms. You'll see that in through here. So for example, now I have 833 spacing. Just remember when you come back into North America, you can just go ahead and come back in through here, go up to channel spacing, kick back to 25 megahertz. So that's it. Those are the three easy tips. How to display latitude longitude on your map page, how to enter latitude longitude waypoints, and then the channel spacing to 8.33. This video was in preparation for an upcoming air journey trip from Canada to Greenland and Iceland and return. Air Journey is a company based in Florida. I really shouldn't say based in Florida because they do trips all over the world, extensive, amazing adventures. And uh, on this particular one, as I mentioned, we're going to Greenland and Iceland. And so we're setting up the G1000 for communications and navigation across that. Uh, visit airjourney.com for more information on a lot of incredible adventures. And of course, our website and channel, Personal Wings.